Your childhood movies aren't nearly as great as you remember them, and a lot of the time they're objectively horrible movies that you just have good memories of because of nostalgia. But LeBron James is about to drop Space Jam 2, and so I thought to myself, might as well return. I was dreading it, because it was a movie I have incredible memories of, and I was like, I don't want to ruin those memories by re-watching it right now. I, like, I have such positive feelings thinking about the movie, but I did it anyway, and boy was I WRONG! I believe this to be the fact, with 100% certainty, that Space Jam 1 is a marvelous, spectacular, flawless gem masterpiece of a movie. There's no shortage of reasons why I remembered in the past as a little itty bitty boy, a little teeny bopper, that I love the movie, and why I love it right now. For those of you who've never watched Space Jam, why? <laughs> I don't get it, why would you not have watched it already? So let's talk about the perfect movie real quick. Each movie has a conflict. They introduce the conflict at the very beginning, it's what gets you hooked. No movie is just everybody getting along, right? Or else it wouldn't be a movie. Every piece of entertainment has some level of conflict. And in this instance, there's some monsters trying to take over planet Earth, and I guess the Looney Tunes world as well. Hmm? And then as the movie goes on, you explain the conflict and things continue to get worse and better and worse and better. Bugs Bunny, he's really gonna pull it off because he got Michael Jordan's help. But then the monsters get really big and steal people's powers. It's a game of momentum that increases the level of conflict more and more and more until it reaches a climax, ladies and gentlemen, when the final game is being played and Michael Jordan is there for the final shot. And it doesn't matter whether you know what's gonna happen or you don't know what's gonna happen. A good story transcends all of that. I mean, in Space Jam, there was no shortage of celebrities, fellas. In what other world are you gonna watch Larry Bird playing golf, hmm? Nothing but the bottom of the cup. And I mean, it doesn't end from NBA superstars like Charles Barkley and Patrick Ewing. And every time you'd see one, you just get a smile on your face like, wow, him too. That's beautiful. Michael Jordan, you know, in his core, he knows how to sell sneakers. That's all he does. Had to have some sneaker integration in there, man. Michael Jordan kind of pushed that whole industry on us. He made us believe that sneakers were of the utmost importance. And this was one of the ways he did it. Whether he was plugging sneakers or Warner Bros had uh, the, their logo tatted on Daffy Duck's ass. Everywhere you look, you see Warner Bros in the movie. It never felt intrusive. When I'm watching a movie and the camera is panning and it crosses a car that says Ford, I know Ford paid to be there. And so it just, it, it kind of throws me out of the experience because like I'm forgetting myself in this piece of entertainment right now. But never in this movie did any of the Warner Bros or sneakers and nothing pulled me out of the world. I grew up watching Looney Tunes and I the first game I've ever played, actually it was the second game I ever played, was a, a Looney Tunes game where I was Bugs Bunny and Taz and we were just in a world on the PlayStation 1 just trying to collect stuff. And so to see that combined with the world of sports is like, what? And then you could easily put yourself into the shoes of the little girl when Daffy Duck just walked inside Michael Jordan's house. And who wouldn't want to be that little girl finding out that Daffy Duck and Bugs Bunny are in her house looking for Michael Jordan's equipment? Catch that, Thanks. Doesn't that make you happy? You think she's got enough toys? Speaking of toys, you know all those mugs and uh, t-shirts and lunch boxes with our pictures on them? Yeah. You uh, ever see any money from all that stuff? <laughs> Not a cent. Mm. Me neither. Not only can everybody put themselves in the shoes of this little girl here, but on their walk down the hallway, they made a joke about them not being paid licensing fees because they see themselves in all these stores and they haven't seen a single cent. Warner Bros. is immersing you deeper into the experience of Space Jam by pulling you out of it. How does that even make sense? I literally have goosebumps right now, guys. And, and one of the best parts is that they didn't have to make a three hour movie marathon to deliver entertainment. Back in the day, movies was just shorter. Now every movie is three hours long for no reason, bloated out the ass, it makes no sense. That being said, Interstellar is my favorite movie of all time. But just the ability to tell a great story concisely, I feel like it's underappreciated. So much now, like everyone feels the need to elongate stories longer than they need to be. They call it character development, but really they're kind of boring us out. We're in the world of Michael Jordan right now. We're immersed in his character as he lives in the Looney Tunes world, and they did it in one hour and 23 minutes. I was literally caught off guard when I was rewatching this. I was like, that's it? That's it? And I was just happy that they did that in such a short amount of time. How's this for a new team name? The Ducks. Please. What kind of Mickey Mouse organization would name their team The Ducks? So sue me. It's just a suggestion. Yeah, <laughs>
What kind of Mickey Mouse organization would call themselves the Ducks? A movie's so great that the memes that were generated from the movie are still relevant today. So if you ever wonder why trolls call LeBron's ring in the bubble a Mickey Mouse ring, it's because this started it. It's beautiful because we see the characters as heroes, but yet they take every imaginable opportunity to make fun of themselves. The jokes at their expense are our entertainment and we don't feel bad for them because we are them. So we kind of just live vicariously in this fascinating Looney Tunes world that Michael Jordan found himself in. And the best part about all of this is the whole story is believable. I don't care if you take Charles Barkley's, Patrick Ewins, Charles Oakley, you could take everybody's powers. But if Michael Jordan is on the opposing team, I still believe Michael Jordan's gonna win. So I don't find it unrealistic that he could beat some stars that took some NBA superstar powers. It's small stuff though. Stuff they don't really do in movies anymore because it's just hard cuts now. But when the transitions from one scene to another, it fades, like it fades and meshes amongst itself. That doesn't happen in movies anymore, throwback. They don't try and overcomplicate the formula of entertainment that works. And I think in doing that, they delivered on one of the greatest pieces of entertainment that we have had the luxury of viewing. All of that to say, LeBron, how do you follow this up? Because I don't doubt that LeBron James can body it as a career, as an actor. I don't think LeBron's gonna do a bad job. But this was done so perfectly. Your shoes to fill are so large. And your pursuit of being the greatest of all time is so serious that even in entertainment, even in the movie making industry, you're competing against Michael Jordan. And I love LeBron, man. I really hope the movie goes spectacular. I hope it is incredible. But the likelihood that LeBron can live up to this, though, to me is not high. LeBron could have done any other movie and I would have sat there and enjoyed it, you know what I'm saying? But now I'm gonna compare. And I hate to compare, man, because I feel like comparison is the killer of joy. And that might sound excessive, but I mean, just to me personally. I don't compare LeBron to the next person, to the next person, to the next person. Like, it's a conversation to have. Is LeBron the greatest of all time? Yes, no. It, it depends, right? It depends who you ask. But it kind of takes away from you just enjoying the moment that is LeBron is like 36 years old, fantastic in the NBA right now now just really breaking records you can't enjoy that if you're out there comparing lebron to the next man all the time that being said i'm optimistic about space jam 2 i think anytime you combine goats with goats you get good entertainment i just hope they don't try and overcomplicate things and try and add way too much to the movie let's keep it simple and let's deliver in the best way we know how fellas the trailer is proof that they're doing a lot of what worked in the previous one in the new one i was impressed that in the original movie they were able to include as many characters as they did and it seems as though they're doing the same here you see you see all the role players Whoa. <laughs> greatness has to follow greatness. Now I say this, if anybody was gonna do a sequel, we're blessed it was LeBron. Hey, I'ma watch it, I'ma watch it two, three times, most likely. I'm gonna sit there and I, I'm gonna try my hardest to enjoy it, guys. Hey, let me know how y'all feel about Space Jam 1, Space Jam 2, predictions in the comments down below. Drop a like, subscribe to the channel. Hey, MJ, you a GOAT for Space Jam 1. I, man, I forgot how great of a movie it was. You don't disappoint. I'ma catch you guys in the next one. I'm out. Peace.